trend that seems to be growing in popularity is what's called a wavy stack text effect. And that's when you have lines of text, one on top of the other, and it has this little wave to it. If you've ever visited the website Creative Fabrica, you'll see there are thousands of designs just like this. And if you've ever wondered, well, how do they do that? I'm going to show you. We're going to use Canva and a free app called Photopea to create this exact effect. My name is Kat, and this is Canva Catterday. Here we are in Canva and it's time to add some text. So I'll hit T on my keyboard and start typing what I want this to say. I love cats and coffee. Let's make this a little larger. Now it's time to choose a font. You can choose from one of the many fonts that are available in Canva, or if you have a pro account, you can upload your own. I do have the pro account and I do have a font already this fun little font with these paw prints on it. And I'm going to make it all caps for this. I got this from Creative Fabrica. If, if you've never been there, it's a fantastic website. They have so many options available. You can download graphics. You can download fonts, images for Cricut machines, images for embroidery machines. There's just an amazing array of content that's here. I highly recommend that you check this out. It's only $47 a year and you get access to everything in their library. So you can go check that one out. I'll put the link down in the description in case you want to look at it. So here we have our font. I have to reduce the spacing that's here because there's a little too much. So I'm just going to go over to line spacing and bring this down. Right about there is good. And let me just bring this up a bit. You can leave it like this. You can leave it all black if you want to, but I think it's a little more fun if you add some color. So you can add color to each word, or you can even add color to each letter. I've done that already right here. Once you have the design and layout and the font and the color that you want, it's time to download this. I'm going to go over here to share and I'm going to click download. I want to leave it as a PNG. Click on transparent background because we don't need the background. And this part's important. You want to click where it says size and drag it all the way over so it's as large as possible. And that's because the default setting for Canva, when it's just on the one size, it doesn't have as high of a resolution. If you drag the slider all the way over and make it as big as it can be, your resolution is going to be much cleaner and it's going to give you an overall better result. So then we're going to click download and it's going to download to my computer. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open it. And next we're going to go to the website photop.com. This is a free website and it's a great app. It can do all kinds of things. So we are going to take our fun design and simply drag it right here into Photop. And here you go. There's our design. Next, we're going to go over here to edit right here at the top. I'm going to click edit. And you're going to scroll down this list until you get to transform. And then there's an option called warp. This is the effect that we want. I'm going to click on warp and you're going to see it gives you this square bounding box. Now, yes, you can drag these little handles and you can go ahead and change it the way you want to that way. But I kind of like the auto effect. I think it's a little bit faster. If you go up here to the very top, because you'll notice it hasn't done anything yet. Well, that's because right now under style, it says none. We have to give it an effect. So I'm going to click where it says none. And now I have all of these options. I can make it arc like that. I can make it look like a little flag where it's got this little wave to it that way. But we want the effect that says wave right here, wave. I'm going to click on that and there's that wavy effect. Now, depending on how many lines of text you've used, sometimes this bottom line can get crushed a little bit. It can be a little too small. So you can adjust just how much this bend happens right up here at the top under percentage. By default, it's going to say 50%. I like to do anywhere between 20 and 35% for me. I find that works best and it lets all of your text still be nice and legible. So I'm going to do 35 for this one. Let's see what that looks like. That's good. I like that. And next we simply download it. So you're going to go over here to file. We're going to do export as, 
We're going to keep it as a PNG. And because we want this to be a nice, clean quality, like say we want to print this on a shirt or on a mug, we're going to make sure that when we download this, the DPI is at 300. If you're in PhotoP for the very first time, the default DPI is going to be 96. Bring this up to 300. It's going to give you a nice, clean look. So we've got all that. And then we're just going to click Save. And then we're going back over to Canva. So I'm just going to add a new page here back in Canva. And then I'm just going to drag and drop that design right here. And there is our fun wavy effect. Once you're here in Canva, you can give it some extra touches if you want to. You could add a couple of graphics. So for instance, let's say I want to add maybe a little cute cat face right here. So let me just adjust this and let's go find cat face and graphics. But this one, this one's cute. I like that one. And we're just going to bring this down a little bit and I can put it right there. That's fun. I like that. Isn't that cute? Now you don't have to add anything additional if you don't want to. You can just leave the text just like it is. If you want to see what it's going to look like on perhaps a shirt or a mug or something like that, you can go over to the app section and click where it says mockups. And we're going to make something. So how about we make a coffee mug? Let's use this one right here, this coffee mug. We're going to click on that. It's going to add it to our page. And then we're simply going to drag our design right on top of it. And it's going to add it to this mock-up. And this is what it looks like. It's so fun. That's what it would look like if it's printed on a coffee mug. Uh, how about a shirt? Maybe you want to print this on a shirt. So let's just undo all these things we did. Let's go to apparel. And here, how about this shirt right here? I like that one. And just drag it right on top of it. It's going to pop it in there for us. Let me bring this up. There you go. That's what it would look like on a shirt. What if we want to add some lines of text, but maybe it doesn't exactly line up properly? You'll notice in most of these designs that when you see them, it's left and right justified perfectly. So if I zoom in a little bit with this one, here we go. See how everything is left and right justified? And that's because they've changed the size of the text. So you might find that you need to do that if your text isn't perfectly aligned. So let me show you that. Let's go back here and I'm going to add another text box and I'm going to change this font because I don't want this font for this one. Uh, let's do, how about, do I have flowers? I do have flowers. Here we go. I'm going to add that to flowers. And this time I'm going to write bloom where you are planted. And let me bring this up. All right. Now you see that my lines of text don't line up on my left and right. It's not force justified. We have to fix that. And the way to do that is simply to change the size of each line of text. So first, let me just change the line spacing. There we go. And I'm going to bring this over here. You want to do this based on your longest line of text. So for this one, the longest line is this third line right here, you are. So all you're going to do now is just simply go to each of the other lines and change the font size. So we're here on the first line and I'm just going to increase the font size until it lines up with the rest of them. Get as close as you possibly can. That's pretty good. Let's go to this next line. I'm just going to click on this. I'm just holding down on the plus sign and that's allowing me to increase the text size here. This one's fine. Planted looks like it has to come up a tiny bit, maybe one or two points. There we go. Now we can take this and download this, add all of our colors, and then bring it back into PhotoP. Why did we do it this way and not just type out the text in PhotoP? Well, let me show you what happens. I'm going to go back to PhotoP. I'm going to refresh my page and just create a new page. And let's just start a brand new project in PhotoP. I'm just going to do a brand new blank design. And maybe I just want to type out some text. So I'm going to grab my text tool and I'm going to start typing pretty much the same thing that I did before. Uh, let's do I love cats and 
coffee. Okay, I need to pick a font and I'm just gonna choose a random font that happens to be here within, um, within PhotoP. So let's do, I think I may have even uploaded one. I might have, let's see. I don't remember if I did or not. Um, probably not, but if you want, you can actually upload a font yourself. It's gonna show you what the local fonts are, but if you wanna upload one, you're going to click right here and click load font. And then you can get a font, like I mentioned, from Creative Fabrica and just load that right into this photo piece. So I know I have a font. Here we go. Groovy. Uh, let's do, well, we'll do, uh, here we go. Groovy Cat. There we go. We're going to upload that. And it's going to upload that to photo P for us. And then we can use this specific font. So if I go over here to the font library, here it is. Here's that Groovy Cat that I did. And it created that size. This is way too small. Let's go to maybe 180. There we go. And let me make this centered. Okay, now it looks like this particular font didn't have an and sign in there. So I'll just type the word and. Once again, we need to adjust the line spacing for this. So you can just go over here and adjust this accordingly. I'm gonna make this about maybe 150. That's good. We can adjust these lines if we want. You don't have to. If you don't want it to be justified, you can leave it just like this. And then I can go ahead through here and I can create the warp effect right here. Since this is text, the warp option automatically shows up. But I want to show you what happens versus when we did it in Canva and doing it here. If I click warp and I go to wave, You'll notice that my top line, see how it's not straight, the top, and even the bottom is not exactly straight. One of the little hiccups with photo P is that when you use the warp effect on native text, the top line stays wavy. Now, if that's the effect you want, that's perfectly okay. But if you want it to be completely straight on the top and the bottom, that's why we use Canva first because that will keep everything exactly in line. But like I mentioned, if you want it this way, you can leave it like this, it's perfectly okay. You can bypass Canva altogether and then just do it right here in PhotoP. And then you would just go through the exact same steps of coloring your text and downloading that as a PNG file and then bringing that back into Canva. But it's a really fun way to create all of that neat wavy text that's available. Now you can create all of your own content and put on shirts, uh, mugs, um, handbags, mouse pads. The sky's the limit when it comes to this type of design. So go play with this and just have fun with it. If this was helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this in the future. That's all for this week. I'll see you next time.